Welcome back to P2A and the RANS S21 build. If you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know that I'm a big fan of tech and the panel is no exception. On the last video we designed this panel and we got things looking just like we wanted it. Today the plan is to get things test fit in the panel as well as placed in the airplane so it's a pretty exciting day here to say the least. On the workbench we have a large pile of parts that I've been slowly gathering up and I'm finally to the point where I can get things mocked up. This doesn't represent everything as I'm short a few screens and some other things but it sounds like it won't be too much longer on all that. I'll give a description of each item as I install it here in a bit. To be honest I had plans to cut this panel entirely by hand as it's not rocket science. Let's be real here, if you're taking on an airplane build you're not a stranger to cutting holes in some aluminum. A while back I cut a rough hole for the comm radio head and it's plenty accurate enough for my purposes. Well the fit is okay and given that the design of pretty much all this stuff has a lip protruding around each bit so that does allow for a generous margin of error before it would be detectable from the face of the panel after installation. That being said, I was dreading the task ahead of duplicating this hole several more times and getting everything to lay out as perfect as I really wanted it to be. Sure it's doable, but every additional hole adds a stack up of tolerances that eventually could be perceivable to the eye. And I don't know about you, but I don't want anything to catch my eye every time I get in the plane and make me regret not doing it right the first time. There's no shortage of builders on YouTube, and several guys out there like the almighty aviation Jesus himself, Mike Patey, as well as channels like Aeroworks and Kitplane Enthusiast have all gone to one place for stuff from hoses and fittings to panel work. And that place is Aircraft Specialty. I proudly partnered with Aircraft Specialty on the build of the P2 Aero Rans S21, and you'll see this name again as we move forward with other parts, so I can't recommend enough that you stop by their website. There's a link in the description. Thumb through the capabilities that these gentlemen have. You'll realize that the value in their services offered and likely increase the quality and safety of your overall build while you're at it. Over on the panels tab, there's a lot of examples of work that they've done and photos and even videos describing their processes and options. Things like powder coat, anodizing, laser etching, and silk screen. The contact tab lists their emails and phone numbers as well. Now let's take a look at the end result here. What we've got is as good as an example of aluminum perfection that I can dream up. We used the factory RANS and Dynon files for most of this, so dimensionally the panel is indistinguishable from the OEM RANS piece. Every detail we added in the computer is in place and executed with a level of accuracy that I don't personally possess. I'm blown away and all hyped up like I just drink a gallon of Mountain Dew, so let's get on with mocking this thing up and trying to get it in the dang airplane. Here we go. Alright, so the first piece to go in is this universal mounting tray for the HDX and all its accessories. I'm mounting these inverted for a couple reasons, so pay no mind to that. These will eventually be riveted into the panel, but for now the mount holes for what will eventually be an HDX screen will hold it in place. Let's go over to the Dynon website and take a look real quick just to see what info they have on these. I feel like it's a very economical way to add a ton of flexibility and easy accurate options for mounting all the items in an easy to access place. I'm using these screws also from Dynon on everything that I can and I think they look awesome. Fit up so far is right on the money so let's keep trucking.
that XPeace is a network hub. Most of these Dynon components talk over a data bus, and this hub just allows multiple items to terminate here in one central location. There's a spot on both mounting trays for one of these, but I'll just need one, so my current layout has me putting this on the right hand side. Next up is the Adhars unit. This box contains all the magic that deciphers your airplane's attitude in space, as well as all the PDOT and AOA information. It's sensitive as to how it's mounted, so since I inverted these mounting trays, I need to flip this guy over. Additionally, I'll have to level this box with the aircraft once I get the panel in place in the airplane. The plan is to simply add washers to space things out where needed to get it just right. I'm using a remote magnetometer and I've already put that back in the tail of the airplane. So I don't have to worry about any of this being magnetically benign, but pay attention to that part of the manual if you're not going that route. Up next is the EMS module, and the purpose of this guy is just to take all your engine data and translate it into something that the Dynon screen can interpret and display. I've gone with the model intended for use with a Rotax engine, as it has a CAN bus input that I intend to hook up to my Hypersports ECU. More to come on that topic real soon. Fit up so far on all this has been spot on, so let's keep going. You've all seen this before, but it's my CAN bus keypad from Blink Marine. It's got backlit button inserts that are fully customizable with each button being programmable to any function that I desire. As expected, it slides right in. Okay, let's move on to more Dynon goodies. All four of the center components will get these nut plates eventually. I'll need to countersink the rivet holes before the finish gets applied to the panel, so for now I'll just be using temporary regular nuts on the back side. First up is the COM head unit. It's basically just the user interface for the remote mounted communication radio. You should start a drinking game based off the amount of times I mention parts fitting in this video, but again, the level of accuracy here is just ridiculous. So impressed.
Up next is the Dynon 2 Play Center Comp. This box gives you volume and squelch control for your headset, as well as an audio input so you can play music if you want. And this one is the optional knob panel. While all these functions are accessible via controls on the HDX screen, this gives you dedicated control for altitude, barrow, and heading or track. I contemplated not using one of these, but in the end I thought it improved the aesthetics of my layout, and it's not crazy expensive, so I went for it. The last piece is the autopilot control panel, and well, like the title implies, it gives you dedicated control over the autopilot and its functions. It's one of those features that I'm most excited about in this build. Visually, this is turning out stunning, but I thought I'd lay a straight piece of aluminum angle across the top of these just to prove that they are all in fact in perfect alignment right out of the box, no fiddling required. Okay, so on to some more goodies. The Dynon system, as well as the ECU and the power distribution module, all periodically will require an update, and having a USB access to those units aids in the ability to connect a laptop or a USB drive up to do those tasks. These four ports are just for that. Next up is a step outside of the normal aircraft hardware, so some will like it and some won't. Either way, I think it's pretty cool, and well, it really doesn't matter what you think. It's my airplane, and I'll do what I want, and you can do what you want on yours. This is a backlit slide potentiometer, and it will serve to dim the interior and dash lights, as well as control heater and defrost fan speeds. The hole just to the right of this is for the ELT control panel, but I don't have that, so let's move on. The key switch that I chose is a Honeywell unit, and it fits in its place perfectly as well. Someday I'd sure like to make a video without having to make excuses for losing footage. But here we are again. Right when I was about to slide this thing into place, the GoPro froze up. And well, you get to miss the good part because I don't want to take it apart again just to reshoot it for you. I've ordered new batteries and cards for the camera, and I've since updated the software so hopefully it'll stop happening to me. What we have here is nothing more than a perfect fit. I have zero interference with the panel structure, and it looks like all the planning and forethought put into the design and the layout of things is paying off. Short of a screen and some wiring, I almost have everything that I need to fire it up and continue working down the path of integrating the Yamaha engine to the Dynon HDX system. More to come on that real soon, so stay tuned. I always enjoy the dialogue that your comments and suggestions bring, so please let me know what you're thinking in the comments section below. A heartfelt thanks goes out to both Aircraft Specialty and Dynon for partnering with the channel, so go show those guys some love and be sure to mention that P2 Arrow sent you their way. Thanks for watching.